In book one, chapter seven of The Sun Also Rises, when Jake arrives at the hotel, the concierge informs him Brett returned to visit him, and she apologizes for having harshly judged Brett on the night she showed up drunk. Brett returns an hour later with the Count, <laughs> wanting to party, but Jake is not in the mood to join them and retires to his room. Brett enters and speaks softly to him, sending the Count away to buy more champagne so they can be alone. Jake asks Brett to run away with him, but she declines, insinuating mm -mm. sex is too important to her. It's my fault, Jake. It's the way I'm made. She says she plans to leave tomorrow for San Sebastian because it's too difficult for her to be around him. When the Count returns, the three drink multiple bottles of expensive champagne and head out to a fancy restaurant for lunch. The Count and Brett talk about their titles, which Brett will be sorry to lose once she divorces her current husband, and the Count suggests she and Jake should get married, but both quickly brush off the comment. When talk turns to the war, the Count shows off his gruesome scars from his wartime injuries. He says that having risked losing everything, he now appreciates everything fully in his life. Brett and Jake don't get that sentiment because they feel the exact opposite. Having lived through the war, they feel dead inside. After lunch, the threesome visits a dance hall. Brett and Jake dance together, but she spends the whole time talking about her fiance, Mike. Brett tells Jake, oh darling, I'm so miserable. Jake asks if she wants to leave and she agrees. They say goodbye to the Count and drive back to Brett's hotel, where they kiss until Brett pushes Jake away and he heads home alone. The Count buys expensive champagne, pursues beautiful women, and parties in dance halls because he believes life is short and must be lived to the fullest. Brett and Jake, on the other hand, use sex, alcohol, and food to distract from their lives rather than to enhance their happiness. Interestingly, the Count warns Jake and Brett not to mix emotions up with a wine like that. You lose the taste. Essentially warning them not to drink to escape emotion or they lose the wine or life's true pleasure. With emasculated Jake, Brett fulfills traditionally masculine roles. She's independent and promiscuous and Jake is left perpetually pining for her. The Count takes care of Brett financially and sexually and Brett reverts to a traditional feminine gender role. Brett views herself differently with men like the Count, not valuing her independence in the same way she does honestly with Jake. This likely contributes to her being miserable. Jake typically runs away from his emotions or escapes them through excessive drinking. The characters rarely speak their true emotions, particularly ones that make them vulnerable. Jake's plea and Brett's remark to the Count that Jake is the only person she can be honest with reveals the true love embedded within their relationship, making their inability to be together all the more heartbreaking.